Hi, I'm Pastor Rachel Toon at Wittenberg University, and I'm here today with Sana Ahmed, who is class of 2015. Hi, Sana. Hi, how are you? Very good. So you are a, high, a middle school teacher right here in Springfield at the STEM school. Mm -hmm. Very good teacher from everything oh, I've hey. heard. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful how you learned from a WIT grad in the classroom and now new WIT grads are learning from you. And mm -hmm. it's really neat to see yeah. that circle of support and that WIT network out there. Yeah. But this That's is so a different nice. year. For sure. Yeah. How <laughs> Very is it going? unexpected. Yeah, how's it going in the quarantine teaching world? It's going as well as I think it could. Um, it's definitely not the same as being in a classroom. I definitely miss seeing my kids and talking to them, but I still get to interact with them through the computer, um, see their work. Uh, it's, it's stressful in a different way because you're not physically seeing them and, and physically there to help them like one-on-one -on -one in person, but technology does wonders. And we were already kind of set up in a way to do virtual learning because we've had virtual days in our school year before. Mm. Um, so kids were already used to the technology piece. So on our end, it was a much smoother transition than maybe for some others who have never really done that technology piece for any type of virtual learning. Mm -hmm. So how often are you on during the day? Like how much do you have to be online and are you doing Zoom classrooms or? So I go live for everyone only about once a week. And then the rest of the week, it's usually one-on-one -on -one conferences, but I'm available throughout the school day. Hmm. So I give them an assignment every single day mm -hmm. and they have to complete it by 7 PM. Mm -hmm. And so throughout that day, they can send me messages or they'll text me on remind or they can call me or we set up conference calls to go through questions. And so I help students individually that way. But then as a whole, I do um, a lot. I go live once a week. Wow. So you I must be busy is very busy. So I'm either recording lessons or making different things to put. It's basically like transforming your classroom into a digital world, which I was already lucky because so many of my things, they already submit online. So they're already used to that part. It's just now like, you know, the videos or, or watching me on a screen and it's them typing their answer as opposed to them, like just raising their hands or asking me in person. So that mm -hmm. part's a little strange, but it's, it's definitely busy. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to me that you're doing that. Now, you mentioned an article that you wrote for the Ohio STEM, Ohio STEM Learning Network. I did an interview with them about um, the shift to virtual learning and how we already had a little bit of that at our school, so how that transition was. So hmm. um, one of the biggest messages I wanted to give through that was just talking about my, my weekly schedule, basically what I do. Um, also just trying to give some kind of encouragement to teachers not to feel bad, um, as they're doing this. Cause it's really hard to put yourself down or overwork yourself. Cause you're, you feel like you're not doing enough. I'm sure mm -hmm. you feel that way. Several people feel that way in their job, but, um, that my most important part, the most important part for me is just connecting with those kids and making sure I reach out to them and making sure everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. Because not only do we miss them, they miss us. They miss seeing their friends. Mm -hmm. They're not in the classroom with their friends. They're not hanging out with them. Um, we have videos, which is great now, but um, it's, it's definitely different. But just trying to be a little bit more encouraging and give whatever advice I can to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the, um, that is how a lot of clergy are describing their work too. They do feel like they're not doing enough. We do mm -hmm. feel as though... Um, we can't do it perfectly, that we're trying out new media, you know, it's, it's a very challenging time. And I think it's very important that we give ourselves a little grace in that sense, like you're sure. describing in the same way. I think that's really true. But when it comes right down to it, I liked what you said about relationships, that mm -hmm. they're the core. What people yeah. really need is that human aspect. For sure. Yeah. We are taught, we were told from administrators, when you reach out to the student, if they didn't do something, to make sure you're saying, how can I help? Just really trying to be supportive and going from that angle because everybody's situation is different and they're not in that same classroom space anymore. So we don't really know what it's like at home or 
how busy things are and how, what their schedules have changed into. So just trying really hard to be helpful and supportive. Oh, that's really neat. Um, you know, one of the delights of having you on campus was your strong faith and the way that you expressed your faith, um, the way you welcomed other people to campus and your active leadership role in us getting an, uh, an interfaith meditation space, uh, um, just, just different aspects on campus. And so I was thinking about you, especially as we we're coming up to Ramadan and so nice knowing, thing to say. <laughs> yeah, knowing that um, every there's a number of holy seasons in a row right now. Right? Yeah. You know, there's Passover and Holy Week with Easter, and then now Ramadan. And so I've been trying to touch base with the alums I know and asking how this is affecting them and what their faith is, you know, able to say to this. So just to start with, for you, mm -hmm. you know, tell us a little bit about what Ramadan is and and how you would normally observe it. Um, in a typical year, just mm -hmm. share a bit with us about that. Well, Ramadan is a month in the Islamic calendar, and it's a month where Muslims all over the world, they fast from sunrise to sunset, and they do extra worship, and they try to refrain from several things to help make them become better people and just worship more. For me, it's more of a time of self-reflection and self-strength. I, I think it's a time where you really realize how much strength you have and what you're really capable of doing. Like if you can refrain from fasting, eating, using bad language, um, refraining from other, maybe what others may consider like filthy things, you can, you see that strength in you and that you can really put whatever you put your mind to, you can accomplish. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a really spiritual month. It's also filled with a lot of family and community and just a, a, a lot of support from each other. and. It's, it's just a really fun month everyone looks forward to. And when it's over, everyone's just kind of like, we have a celebration, but then it's like, oh, like our lives are kind of centered around the mosque mm -hmm. and family gatherings. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really special month. Mm -hmm. I, one thing that um, some people don't realize is that you do get to eat. You just eat yes. after sundown. <laughs> and those yeah. meals, those iftars are a very big deal. Yes, um, the, they're I, really special. Right. I was first introduced through Dr. Pankhurst. Did you ever mm -hmm, have yep. him? I didn't have him, but I know him. Yeah. And uh, he would provide the iftar with the mosque. But it introduced me to what the iftar is. And it's, I found it to be a time of joy and celebration and lots of people. And love. Yeah. <laughs> and lots of love, right? Beginning with the prayer and then coming in to eat. So how is it changing for you now? So I think every family has their own traditions of how they do it, right? Um, and so here growing up in Springfield, our life is really centered around the mosque. So every night we go for nightly prayers. Um, and then on the weekends, we always have potlucks or catered meals on the weekend. And that's something that everyone really looks forward to. So that the first biggest change is going to be not, be not going to the mosque to do those nightly prayers in congregation that's going to be really strange because I've been doing that my entire life. Mm. At and if I didn't go every day, at least I would go majority of the time. Even when I was little tagging, tagging along with my parents and now as an adult, just going. So that's going to be the biggest change. Um, however, those type of prayers are you're able to do um, at home. And so I think um, kind of setting more of a, a schedule for myself to make sure I, I take that time that I would have been going to the mosque to just do at home mm -hmm. and set up that spiritual time. The other big thing is the meals. Um, so I think just uh, really making that time special with my family at dinner. I am with my parents right now um, and my husband. So that's nice being able to, I still have some company. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I might try to do some more virtual meals this time. I don't know, like getting everyone on that would be um, FaceTime or Zoom. <laughs> but I think one of the greatest things that um, for every faith is that you can still practice your faith and your celebrations without the, necessarily the house of worship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always great to have that, but you can still be spiritual and have that faith within your own home, wherever you are. I think that's one of the greatest things about faith is that you can carry that wherever you are. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big, I think, realization for many um, for all faiths. I thought about that too, like Passover, Easter, um, 
Ramadan, every, so many faiths have been affected. And I think that so far, everyone else has done a good job about making accommodations. They're still getting that spiritual feeling. So I think we'll be able to do the same. Mm-hmm. We get so attached to a building. We do. You know, and I think we get attached to it because it's the place of community. Yeah. Faith. It's not only where we're, where we feel closer maybe to God, but it's also where we learn from others. And that interaction. That faith is. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen any Zoom prayer time? Yeah. So I've known some who have been doing like uh, sermons um, mm-hmm. through like different online platforms, whether that's YouTube, Facebook Live, Zoom. I've seen a lot of that going around, which is cool. So just for people to not like, because we can't go to Friday congregational prayers, they still have that time where they're listening to someone and still getting that. Um, so I've seen a lot of that. I think uh, things of us like reading Quran, like our, our book, um, praying and all of those things can still be done with yourself and with your family. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that. I think um, I'm, I'm guessing some families are doing that a lot more at home as well too. And I know Ramadan is also a time of increased giving of mm-hmm. alms. I think that our mosque is really good about um, reaching out and doing a lot of those extra charity works. And they've already done a few they've provided meals for certain places we've had some members donate masks Mm. um we have some volunteers that are help doing food deliveries for the homeless shelter so i see a lot of that still continuing uh, maybe donating in um, monetary ways Mm -hmm. and other things like that i have a lot of relatives in the healthcare Mm -hmm. um, field so i know a lot of that stress Mm -hmm. and um I, I would see it with my, with my brothers and my sister-in-laws and, and my dad and, and just, you know, that going into work every day and not knowing what's going to happen. And so just like a lot of prayers for that as well. So I think there'll be a lot of praying, a lot of charity, um, in many different aspects. So. Is everyone healthy in your family right now? Yes. Everyone is healthy. Um, thanks to God, everyone is healthy and just continuously praying for them and and keeping distance. It's really, really hard for me to keep my distance from my nieces. Um, I just miss them so much, Mm. but they're so small and they're young and I just, um, don't want to risk anything. So that's been a really hard part. Right. So that gets into the last question I had was just about how your faith is a resource. You've talked a little bit about that in terms of uh, your prayers and, um, that clearly is a place of strength for you and comfort. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that, how does that speak into this difficult time? I feel like this time is a big time for self-reflection and just thinking about what are we doing? What is it? We have all this extra time now in certain aspects, obviously for those who are still working, there's a lot that you're doing, but there's also this extra time. I don't know if you feel that as well mm-hmm. by not going out, mm-hmm. not driving around. So using that time to think about what, what am I doing to contribute to the world? Am I, am I being positive? Am I doing the things that I feel like God wants me to do? What are the reasons this might be happening? I think it's a lot of time for self-questioning, for self-reflection and seeing what are the areas that I can grow in and become better in. Mm -hmm. I feel like in one aspect, um, some people might look at this as like a punishment. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily look at it as that it's a punishment. I look at it as a time to take, we're being given this time to see what can we do to make things better Mm -hmm. and how can we grow and what can we do during this time? I feel like we're being given this time to to help Mm -hmm. with certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, and just really focusing on prayer Mm-hmm. and helping one another that kindness and you see so many stories of it all these amazing people that are donating that are doing deliveries for people that are mm-hmm. um like our school i think they delivered all the extra masks and sanitation equipment that we had to give to other places and you see so many people doing things like that and you really just see the kindness that everyone has within mm-hmm. and a lot as, as horrible as the things are that are going on you we've also seen a lot of love from people to really help combat that the medical profession too just and the store clerks and the janitors and the people who yes. are you know kind of day-to-day taking care everyone of at others. the grocery stores that's right there's a lot of people who are sacrificing right now it's pretty neat 
That's really wonderful to hear those uh, aspects of your faith and how they've strengthened you. And, um, and I like this piece about self-reflection. I'm going to take that to heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to find times when I'm intentionally reflecting on this. Yeah. A lot of times, all of this extra learning that we've been doing has almost been a, a an obstacle to reflection. Like, yeah, do, do, do and figure out the next thing. Yeah. Instead of just settling down into myself. Yeah. And taking time to reflect on what I'm learning from this, what I'm, what I'm, um, how I'm growing during this time and where God is in the middle of it. You know? I think that a good tool that I need to be better at as well is journaling during mm -hmm. this time. I think before we even closed school, schools, I was telling students back when I thought some could still travel, mm -hmm. like journal about it. Like, cause you probably won't experience anything like this again in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you're older, just to have that, like what, what was going on and what's going through your head, what's happening in the world. Cause it's very, it's very strange. It's a strange time that no one can really compare anything to. No. So to know what, what thoughts are going through your head and, and how you're growing and learning at the time to be able to reflect on that even later mm -hmm. um, might be a really neat thing to have. Yeah, I think so. Even if it's just a now and then that you, re that you write about it. It doesn't have to be every day. Yeah, just like a little, even, or even just like a little blurb or mm -hmm. every week or just after everything is done, just journal about it. I don't, just whatever your method is, but... Mm -hmm. It's a strange time. <laughs> no. I'm grateful for what you're doing with kids. That is just very inspiring to me that you're focusing on each student as a person and not just as this, you know, techno the other side of technology, but is actually still this real human being in your life that you've always cared about and that you invest in as a teacher. And, you know, I please greet your family for me and I will. Um, and greet your family for me as well. I will do that too. And I wish you a blessed uh, Ramadan that, Thank you. that in, even in this time, maybe even the meaning of it will be even more powerful mm -hmm. and that the uh, assets and strength of your faith will truly be something that nourishes all of you during this, during this time. Yep. Thank you. That's so kind. <laughs> God bless you. I'm God bless you too.